Well, we had some drama in the Arca West doubleheader. Plus, had maybe one of the best Xfinity Series races I've ever seen in Chicago. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. So over the weekend the ARCA West Series went to Irwindale for a doubleheader weekend. Two races, two very different races I'd say. Race number one I'd say was not too noteworthy. Sean Hingarani, young driver for Venturini, completely dominated pretty much this whole entire race, was leading by five, six, seven seconds at points in this race. But I'd say the biggest story of race number one, and I've mentioned her on this channel here before, was Isabella Robusto. She was getting more and more speed throughout the day, and actually at the end of this race, drove down Hingarani, those two actually being teammates for Venturini, drove down Sean Hingarani, but was unable to find a way to get around him to potentially get her first win. So Robusto would end up coming home second, while Hingarani gets the victory in Irwindale. Now we're on to race number two, which I'd say was the more entertaining of the two races, plus... There was some drama at the end of this event. Starting on the pole for race number two was actually probably the third best car in the prior race at Irwindale, and that was Trevor Huddleston. Huddleston being a very hardworking race car driver, really does great work in the car that he's in. He's not in a Venturini car or something like that. He does a great job and actually led the beginning portion of this event. But then eventually... He would actually lose the lead to Isabella Robusto. Isabella out front leading at Irwindale looking to get her first career victory. It looked like today could potentially be the day. Seemed like she was the fastest car in the field in that race. And even in the prior race at Irwindale once she really figured out the track and they made some potential adjustments during the breaks. She was the fastest car at the end of that race and looked like she could have been the fastest car in this race until she got up into the wall, up into turns one and two, ending her shot at a victory. Very unfortunate for Isabella, who's very close to winning a race here very soon. I think, it, I think she's somebody we're going to be talking about for quite a while climbing the ranks of NASCAR. That would end up giving the lead back to Trevor Huddleston, who actually not long after that would also get into the wall after losing a tire. Wow, it's bad luck to be out in the lead, apparently, unless your name is Sean Hingarani. And then at this point, it looked like Hingarani was going to drive away and easily sweep the weekend until we got a late caution with Jake Finch going around, hitting the wall pretty hard, bringing out a late race caution. Hingarani was able to have a fantastic restart, actually began to drive away. Jack Wood also had a fantastic restart, passing a couple people on the high side, moving up to second. Then we had a caution at the very end. We had a little bit of controversy, a little bit of drama, a little bit of misunderstanding when it comes to the rules, I guess. For the end of this event. But the win would end up going to Sean Hingarani. Who ends up sweeping the weekend. Getting both wins in the ARCA West Series at Irwindale. And I'd say the big drama for this race was after the race. The post race. Possibly some sort of issues with the track promoter. And this race team in particular. I'm not exactly sure that's a, that's what it seems at least and that's what a lot of people are saying i'm not trying to be like tmz or something silly like that but this is kind of interesting i've never seen a scenario like this they didn't interview the winner hingarani at the end of this event and take take a listen to this short clip 
I will warn you if that there is a little bit of colorful language involved with this. Picking it up tonight, climbing the fence. Hey, f you, buddy. Wood picking up P2. Come on up, Jack Wood. Congratulations, dude. P2 tonight. What a gentleman, class act. We're not, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're not. They're so disrespectful. I'm not interviewing them. They don't need it. Come on out. Like I said, not really anything to really pay too much attention to, but it is kind of interesting. I don't usually see this, especially at this level. I can definitely see this in your local short track racing sort of thing, but at this sort of level, at an ARCA level, it was kind of surprising to see and hear something like this happen. All right, now let's move on to the main course. Let's move on to the Xfinity Series race. And I say it almost every week. I don't think I said it last week, but I say it almost every week. The Xfinity Series put on the best race this weekend once again. And I think we can all thank Shane Van Gisbergen and Kyle Larson. Because that's pretty much what this whole race was. We had some incidents and some other battles throughout the field. But pretty much the whole entire race, the camera was on these two because they were inseparable. Whether that was what Kyle Larson said or not, that he was just toying with them. I don't know if he was or not. I, he could have been. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Shane's just out there really just having a great time no matter what's going on. And it was an amazing race between these two. We knew that these two were going to be the big competitors for the win all race long, and that's what it was. A great race between them. But then at the end of this race, it ended up becoming more of a strategy sort of deal as you had some drivers stay out on older tires and you had drivers like Kyle Larson, like SVG and Ty Gibbs, some of these other drivers come down and take four fresh good years near the end of this race. And that left some drivers that actually shown like they had some pretty good speed, maybe not as fast as an F SVG or a Larson, but drivers that were still pretty quick, like a Jesse Love, like an Austin Hill. He was up there as well. You had Connor Mozak. You had some pretty good drivers up at the front staying out on slightly older tires than their competition. But that still wasn't enough to hold these drivers back as Shane and Kyle Larson were picking apart this field fairly quickly. But especially SVG. SVG was flying through this field looking like fast and furious flying through that field. I was very impressed by his driving all race long as I usually am when we get to a road course. Well, with some more late race madness, some more cautions here at the end, SVG was in a decent position with only a few laps to go to potentially get up, catch, and make the pass on Jesse Love. Well, Shane was able to make pretty quick work of Jesse Love once he was able to get to his bumper, gets to his inside, actually squeezes him, a little bit off of the turn, taking the lead, drives away to win his third race on the year. Amazing job from SVG all race long, getting another victory. And honestly, this win for SVG didn't just cap off a fantastic day for, for Shane and colleague racing and everything on going on over there with that race team, but it also capped off an amazing, almost perfect day for NASCAR because you had concerts that day. You had a lot of fan experience down in the midway and stuff like that at the track. You didn't have rain. Rain did not affect this day. And you had a fan favorite, a world-renowned race car driver like Shane Van Gisbergen win the race. It was pretty much a perfect day for NASCAR and what NASCAR really wanted from this event. I think they would have wanted the Sunday race to not get rain too. But either way, Saturday was a fantastic race, not just for that 97 team, but also for the whole sport of NASCAR. Because that really showed during that day 
that the Chicago Street Course can be a good racetrack to race at. It can produce good racing and that this event is a good thing and can potentially be a huge success for the sport if it's not already after this season. But just to get back to Shane real quick, once again, a great celebration from him. I'm surprised we didn't see him do the drifting around the racetrack. Maybe he was kind of worried about hitting the walls, it being so close quarters, it being a street course and all. But I I just love to hear his interviews, his post-race interviews. I like the rugby kick. I I would almost say it's a little, little bit cheesy, to be honest. But at the same time, I enjoy it. It's cool. It stands out. And I just really like Shane Van Gisberg. And he has such a positive attitude. He has a, has a fantastic personality. I just enjoy watching him race. And no matter what he does, whether he wins or gets wrecked, he just gets out of the car. And he's like, oh, that was fun. He just like enjoys everything that he does when involves when it involves a race car. And I, I love that. And I hope to continue to see more success from Shane. I hope he continues to improve on the ovals. I do notice his improvement on the ovals. I'm hoping by the end of the season, maybe he can be more of a consistent top 10, top 15 guy on an oval. Wouldn't quite say he's ready for the Cup Series. No matter how bad, I would love to see him race full time in the Cup Series because I'm a huge fan of Shane, clearly. But I just don't know if he's quite ready for the Cup Series. He's, of course, ready on the road courses. He'll probably win a couple road courses, maybe even be competitive on the super speedways. But the ovals still need some work. And this week, they go to Pocono. Pocono, I'd say, is a great track, actually, for a road course racer just because it's three completely different turns. So I can see Shane actually having some potential speed at Pocono. Maybe not winning speed, but maybe top 10 Top 15 speed, we'll have to see. But give me all your thoughts down below. What did you think of the two ARCA races? What do you think of Isabella Robusto? That's the big story, I'd say, from this past weekend in ARCA, is Isabella and her growth in the sport and her performance. I'm very excited to see her future. And then give me your thoughts about that insane Xfinity race, about Larson versus SVG, and maybe even talk a little bit about Shane and his potential future in NASCAR. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but thanks for watching. That'll do it for me. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.